I hope you have a vision. I hope you've started putting together a vision for what you want to see for yourself for 2024. And here's the thing. Do not be your own hater. What's up, guys? I am your girl, Candy. And whoo, this has been a year. <laughs> we have had a lot of things happen this year. A lot of great things happen this year. I think coming into this year, 2023, I was kind of like thinking, uh, I don't know what this year is going to bring. Even though I had things going on, I still was kind of feeling down coming into the year because t I tend to do that. I don't know, in the winter time, my energy is not always great. But this year actually turned out to be pretty dope. I think I've been able to do some really fun things. Let's just get into it. Starting out the year, I was doing my second Broadway production as a producer that I had been a part of, which was the piano lesson. And when I tell you it was such an honor to be a part of that, just because, you know, I was like such a fan, well, I still am such a fan of the cast, Samuel Jackson and Danielle Brooks and all, and, 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 and you know, John David Washington. It's like, I was already a fan of their work, but to be able to be a producer on the Broadway show that starred them, it was just like, I think I started feeling like, wow, like you're doing it for real. Like, have you ever like done something or had a dream to do something? And then it's like in your heart of hearts, you knew you would do it one day, right? Then, you know, you always had, I don't know, sometimes we always have that little bit of doubt in the back of our mind or like the little, the, the little inner hater in you, <laughs> which I've been telling people, like I learned from myself. So that's something I've been telling people recently, like, uh, don't be your own hater. But what I mean by that is, it's like you can really want something in life and you say you're gonna go after it in life, but then you allow, allow self-doubt to creep in and question whether you will be able to achieve that goal or that type of success. Yeah, when it came to this show, and to say that we had that caliber of talent, in my mind, I almost felt like, wow, I can't believe then I'm able to work with, you know, Samuel L. Jackson, or I'm able to work with, you know, Daniel Brooks in this capacity, right? But if this is something that I really dreamed to happen, why was I questioning it? Hmm. I don't know, but I did. Even though I questioned things, or, you know, have let that self-doubt creep in, I still push past it. And it came together and it was amazing. It got us our first uh, Tony nomination. When I say us, I mean me, Todd, and my boy Brian Moreland, who is my producing partner. When I tell you that feeling was one of the most awesome feelings in the world, it was kind of like, I guess one, one more of those things that I've always wanted, but it's like now it actually became within reach. I was like, oh my God. I can't believe this is happening. But why was I saying, I can't believe this is happening? Cause you're supposed to believe with all your heart and soul that these things will happen, right? So just think of this. We came to New York for uh, the Tony Awards. My wife flew out her hair and makeup. And right now hotels are at a premium cause the awards is here. So that was gonna cost, I think seven, $8,000. So we already had a spot, so. And it costs us anything. Well, she still had to put her glam up, but she put them up in Jersey. So, you know, Jersey hotels are much cheaper. So we saved quite a bit. This is Candy's first time staying here. I never thought I was going to get her. She, she didn't even want to come. But when she found out the venue is literally across that bridge in Washington Heights, it worked out great. So, yeah, we're in Jersey. I think it just gave me a little more, a little bit more happiness 
and joy inside of me to say it is the truth like whatever you work for whatever you go for you really can make it happen whatever you speak into existence you really really can make it happen because how long i've been telling y'all that i'm gonna win and he got I've been saying it for a minute, but you know, I know a lot of people's like, yeah, child, okay, whatever. But this 2023, I was nominated for an Emmy and a Tony at the same damn time. And although I did not win, it just still gave me what I needed to know, like, this is a real dream, a real thing, and I can really make it happen. I just got to keep going. So yeah this year has really 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 done that for me like i feel like in the past you know i have accomplished a lot of things that i wanted to accomplish or i said that i was gonna accomplish but this was like some next level stuff for me because i guess like it's like my big dream you know how you have a big big dream and you may have like some smaller goals or dreams or whatever but this is a part of my big big dream and to have two things of my big big dream to almost like be right there at my fingertips i was like "Ooh, ooh, it's coming it's coming so yeah this is a good year this is a good year a very good year i feel like um you know we all have many many ups and downs all the time and um i think work-wise i had a lot of ups meaning yeah some things didn't go my way and please believe i said i can't wait I was like, um, I was like, you on the other hand? So we was going back and forth a little bit. But I didn't really get as disappointed or down and out about it because I just took them as lessons and was like, okay, you know, I'm going to fix this or fix that and, and going in the future. I think for me, my downs this year, I had some downs in relationships. And, and what I mean, like people and people that I was, you know, had relationships with, not dating relations. I mean, like friendships, relationships. Yeah, it was a couple of people that I felt close to that. Yeah, I'm not as close to anymore. <laughs> I mean, and all around my life, like relationships in the life that's been public, meaning what you see on TV, relationships with people that may not necessarily be public. You know, I, I bagged back on some people really i i and you know obviously on tv you can see a lot of those relationships went downhill <laughs> yeah, they went downhill but you know sometimes i guess within doing tv shows with people i kind of like know that there's going to be falling outs or whatever but in my personal life i don't really have a lot of falling outs often so um to have you know a couple of those actually happen this year as well was just kind of weird for me so i think 2023 has been a learning year in so many different ways obviously in business i'm always learning but in relationship meaning friendship um you know and how to deal with others it was definitely a learning time <laughs> a definitely a learning time for me and i'm still really um learning how to navigate life in a sense just like everybody else because you know it's, it's sometimes it's hard to move forward you know with people that or or move forward choose to move forward or choose to cut off or choose to stay in communication but keep it at a certain level you know what i mean it was so many things that i had to like go through my brain about like well what where do I want to be as far as how I deal with people going forward? So with that being said, you know, I just kind of like felt like obviously I'm going to pull more into close family, close friends. And I decided to open myself up to meeting new people and making new friendships, which is unusual for me. <laughs> like normally I'm a little standoffish. I don't know what you got what i think about you or whatever whatever but this year i decided to try to open myself up more to that and i really started that off at the beginning of the year um at the top of the year you know i had like a little gathering at my house it wasn't nothing special but it was cool we um my cousin patrick invited people you know we invited people to the house just to have like just a regular kick it gathering to bring the new year in with people that i didn't normally get to would have gotten to know basically so i thought that was a great way to start off my year because i actually did take more time throughout this year 2023 to um 
do other things and meet and introduce and, and um, invite people that I didn't normally always invite. So like even um, say for instance, everybody saw and I had invited all, all those people to the Beyonce concert. I genuinely wanted to build new relationships. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna have random kick it moments throughout this year where I just invite people. It was nothing where I'm trying to get nothing out of it. I don't want nothing from you. You don't want nothing for me but we just let's just have fun you know and I'm just gonna invite people that I don't always invite so um I had two nights of tickets that I bought like I did this uh you know you get the suite or whatever I had two suites and y'all know that wasn't cheap okay because Beyonce wanted her coin okay so anyway uh but I did it because I just wanted to have a fun night where I just invited different people and just had a good time and that's what we did we had a blast and mind you I did invite some people that I am cool with like that we do hang out a lot but then I invited a few that were cool but I didn't necessarily I hadn't really hung out hung out with them a lot so anyway it turned out to be a good thing I made some new relationships I'm not just that day but other days as well throughout this year and I look forward to growing them. I think I'm just growing. Um, another thing that happened this year was like, obviously there was a lot of work and different things happening at the earlier part of the year. But then when the strike happened, it wasn't as much filming going on. Not that I wasn't working as much because I was still doing shows, my group escape. I was still, you know, doing my social stuff. And For real? Uh-uh, like candy candy. Stop the screen. Oh my God, no. <laughs> Wait, like a six party? Where's she at? Candy, come on out, girl. Hello, ladies. Hi. Hi. I love a little party. Bun has been saying that y'all need to spice up y'all life a Show little bit. Show the faith, dude. Now, I done heard about the women of the church, but as far as like having to be somewhere to film every day, I didn't have to do as much. So it was good. I enjoyed having more, you know, a lot of people was like, well, how did you feel about the strike? And I felt like the strike was necessary. Obviously, I do love to work all the time now, yeah. But I definitely felt like it was a much needed break because I am one of those type of people that if it's like multiple auditions and multiple jobs that need me here, there, and everywhere, then I, I normally try to make it happen. And that does take away from family time. Whereas this year, I was able to do more family time and not necessarily a whole bunch of vacations. I'm talking about just being at the house. My kids can't, you know, we brought our kids to um, Baltimore when we did the first kick out. We kickoff weekend for the Wiz because you know when you have kids small kids because my big kids they can do what they want to do but my little bitty one you know they be missing me when I'm you know traveling a lot so what I decided was that I wanted to start taking them with me more often now the tough part about that with my kids because i know it's a lot of celebrities that take their kids places but my kids are in international school and they're learning mandarin so it's hard you know when you i don't necessarily like to take them out for too many days at a time because i don't want to because you know that's not that's like one of the hardest languages to learn i don't necessarily want them to be gone from school all the time because i definitely want them to really be emerged in in it i do enjoy being able to take them places and especially now that blaze is a little bit older and is not such a blaze because blaze i don't know about y'all but my little um night 2019 baby she's born at the end of 2019 which really makes her fall into that um what is that the pandemic baby um you know they call them quarantine babies they ain't nothing to play with okay she used to show up and show out all the time you know, she's that child that used to fall out on you in public. That was Blaze. Watch out. Whoa. She's starting to mature a little bit. Now she's, you know, she's a girly girl. I'm going to put my bracelets on so I can be a princess. Princess Blaze and King Ace. Prince Ace or King Ace? Prince Ace. She likes to have fun and she does like to go places. So when she gets to having an attitude, I have to say, hey, 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 do you want to go or not? Because <laughs> you ain't going to be embarrassing me in these streets. Okay, yes. Come on, give me that waltz. Come on, girl, let me see you walk, walk, walk. <laughs> so. 
um now i can you know really take them with me more often but um i do enjoy that more and i and that's part of what i enjoyed about the strike happening was that i was able to do that more with my kids you know what i mean and my husband you know what i mean we like to have fun we like to do stuff we spend a lot of time together which is cool you know he goes out of town with me a lot you know we do things together a lot we work together a lot which means sometimes we bump heads a lot but yeah we figure it out <laughs> you said do what yeah she's gonna say y'all ready and then yes <laughs> oh i was in a movie this year and i said uh, now that's the thing about the pandemic i mean about the strike that i didn't like i didn't really get to promote none of the shows and the movies i was on so like it was a lot of things that dropped this year that i didn't even get to talk about which i thought was crazy so you know, I was in another season of The Shy, which that's about to start back up, actually. That's starting back up now. So I was in another season of The Shy. I was super excited because I was on a billboard that they had put on Sunset and I couldn't even post about it, y'all. It was so sad. So The Shy was, you know, I was still happy to be a part of that ser series. A la carte came back out and I was doing the most in that this new season of a la carte, but I couldn't promote it really, which I'm still happy to be a part of it. I was in a movie. Well, a movie not only that I'm just in, but a produced with my husband, The Past. Today is the first day of the second week, so it's Monday. Um, it's supposed to be our last week of filming, praying that we don't go over. Um, that's me as the producer saying that, because that means we're over budget, <laughs> which we are over budget, but it's okay. Not that much. We are shooting the anniversary so scene for the movie. So it's pretty much like an all cast scene almost. I'm bombing, I'm video bombing. Okay. <laughs> he this made is, me do it. This is the mom. Mama and she Edda. is a trip. <laughs> and, and who wrote this? <laughs> Todd Tucker wrote it. And yeah, I'm not, it's not, I heard it's based off of a few mothers. It's not specific to any one mother in law. He might have some inspiration. I don't know. At, at listening to the dialogue that's from Edda, I'm like, this sounds familiar. familiar. That's what I heard you say. Oh, yeah. So that's good. Are we doing our job? Oh, you're doing a great job. Thank you, Mama. She's she amazing. Amazing. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Let me be clear. I am a producer, executive producer, excuse me, as well as an actress. So I'm playing two parts in front of camera and behind the scenes. Yes. Um, I'm super excited because Todd and I have been talking about doing this and we finally have done it. And it was amazing. We got so so many great reviews and I'm super happy about it. So that was a blessing. Actually, right now we're about to do another movie. So I wrote a different movie. I can't tell y'all the name of it yet, but I will eventually. That we're going to be starting to film like early spring or late winter. I don't know what that's considered to be, but yeah. So we're going to, we're getting ready to set that up. But, and Todd is um, going to be writing another part, uh, two of the past. But as of now, we still, we, we coming back. We coming back, back to back. I ain't got time to be letting y'all forget about us. Okay. Oh, and we brought the dungeon back. You know, we we, we over here just trying to get right for the, the candy camera. <laughs> so let's let's talk about candy right now for a goddamn second. Hold on. Now. <laughs> Somebody came to my room, right? Oh yeah. And then you know, listen, my girl got her stuff laced out. By the way, you know what I'm saying? The dungeon was lit, of course. <laughs> You know, it's always going to be lit. And when we think of the positive and the negatives of the year, and the negatives are is that it's always somebody online somewhere that be trying to come for me. They be trying to tear me down, tear down my circles here, you know, just like unnecessarily. I just be like, like these people, some of these people really hate me, I understand. It was heavy at the top of the year. It was heavy at the top of the year and I see it's coming back around now. You know what I mean? Because they're missing housewives. Is that what it is? I have no idea, but it's like we go through these different points throughout the year where it's always somebody that's like gonna jump on the bandwagon Oh, I don't like candy and I'm going to try to get the world, so the rest of the world to dislike candy. When I go through those moments, I per personally try to just ignore, right? I try. I can't always, but I try because I feel like if I do reply or do anything, it always gives 
extra attention to it. So yeah, it's just like, even when you're trying to do right in life, when you're trying to make things happen, you always gonna have somebody that's gonna come and try to piss on your parade. So even though we've been having some amazing things happen this year, ooh, speaking of amazing, um, recently I was on the list of the top 40 women on Variety Magazine's list of 40 most powerful women in reality TV. It was really, really fun. I went to the dinner that they did. I had a great time. Um, they had me and Kyle sitting next to each other. And that was the first time that Kyle and I actually really had like real conversation. I mean, I've seen her obviously over the years, but we never really talked like one-on-one. -on -one. And I thought it was great. I had a good time. I thought she was super cool. We had a good conversation. We clicked. It wasn't even trying to. It was just like natural. So I enjoyed that. I enjoyed, you know, seeing the other ladies there. It was like super cool. Like I enjoyed myself. Yeah, it was a moment. It was definitely a moment. I've been looking forward to more, more great moments like that and more moments to connect with more people that, like I said, I don't normally connect with. So I think that was the part about that dinner that I also appreciated. Thinking of connecting with people that I don't always get to connect with, and I also said I wanted to show more appreciation um, this year. So one of those things were I decided, and it wasn't even just like my decision. So a couple of people who run fan pages for me, um, you know, they reached out. So Pretty Girl Zaria, shout out to you, friend. She was a young lady that I met on social media a long time ago, and I've pretty much watched her grow up. Like seriously, she's a grown woman now. When I first met her, she was younger. So now I guess I consider her a friend, you know, even though we met through social media, right? But she takes up for me like no other on social social media. Anyway, and there's like a group of them. Like they didn't, not all of them knew each other. Like different people on social media who I guess really just, really be having my back online. And at times when I can't respond or try not to respond like I do, they really come in and respond to me. So hard at, at that some people be thinking that it's me having like a fake page, acting like I'm a person trying to take up for me. But no, it's really them taking up for me. So which I appreciate, right? So Zaria had hit me up earlier in the summer and was like, hey, you know, I know you do your thing, your charity events during the holidays, you know, maybe we could all, some of the people who run some of your fan pages, maybe we could, you know, participate. So I was like, okay. And then I was like, you know what, if they're going, cause you know, they don't all live in Atlanta. So I was like, okay, if they're gonna come to Atlanta, then let's make it a moment. Let's do a dinner where we really have our moment just for us just me and them and let them have time where they can really just ask me whatever they want and we can really talk for real off camera off record whatever and they can have real time with me so we did it it happened um during the thanksgiving week because that was the week that i do my food giveaway for candy cares and they wanted to participate so we did the dinner the day before and when i tell you we had a blast and I had so much fun with them. We had like a really, really good time. It was not for us. They had brought me gifts. I didn't even think they was gonna bring me gifts. And I had bought them all sweatshirts with candy coated click on there. <laughs> and now we got like a whole group chat on Instagram where we all be talking and stuff. So it's, it was really cool because I felt like it gave me an opportunity to show appreciation appreciation to the people who look out for me and they don't have to. You know how you know, it's like, it really means something when they don't have to, but they do it anyway. So I appreciated that. Now the crazy thing about it was, even though it was a great moment, and there was a lot of people when I posted about it, they had some good things to say, right? And it was like, oh, that was really dope, you know? But then, it, of course, you know, it was always some, some, I guess a couple of blog pages picked it up. Then they was trying to make it seem like it was a negative thing or whatever. Like, oh, like maybe it's something wrong with them for them wanting to support me. And I'm like, why is it a problem for them to want to support me like that? When you see people in Rihanna's Navy or you see people, you know, Nikki's crew or whatever, like nobody get mad at that. And then I start to think. You're se they're separated. They're celebrities. You've crossed the line of where you're an influencer, you're a brand and a celebrity, and people don't know where to place that. So you can't be cool with Sky by Nature or 
tease tales with somebody or your fan pages because then you're paying them but you're right. actually doing the same thing they're doing posting making videos and doing the, the work so the you've crossed that line and you're the only one that seems to be doing it and they don't know where to place you that's that's what i tell that is kind of weird though like why do y'all think that why do people i don't know feel like if anybody support me or if i'm cool with anybody like i gotta be paying them to do it why is it but yeah they're real people i almost did not tag them in my post because i thought about it and i was like the cool thing about them having these pages is their anonymity what is it anonymity anonymity oh how do you pronounce it you know what i'm talking about them being able to have these pages without having to have their face out there people like people like i said people was thinking that it was me so all this time you thought you were going back and forth with me and you realize oh I really wasn't going back and forth where I was going back and forth with this person or that person and now you're trying to make it seem like it's something wrong you know what I mean it's so crazy you know it's almost kind of cool when people can have a page where they don't have to put their face because they don't have to deal with the negativity like what somebody like me has to deal with and I'm used to it so you know I guess I wasn't even as worried about it. But, you know, they were like, oh, we gonna have to, we, we ready to go in. Like, they was getting mad. I was like, don't even worry about the people that are coming at you with the crazy, you gotta let it go. But either way, I plan on continuing to do, doing stuff with them. Realistically, I guess they're like Team Candy, right? And there was never really a name for it, but I guess because it was like, I gave them the Candy Coated Click shirts. <laughs> you know, it was like, oh, they're part of the Candy Coated Click, which they are. They still are. But I honestly was thinking about doing something even bigger with going into 2024, where I wanted to have like a membership type of club where I have like really like set events, set things that like a schedule of events, whether it's lives, events, whatever, events, whatever it's going to be. Multiple things, giveaways, all kind of stuff that happens every month and it'll be scheduled, but you only get to be a part of it if you become a part of the clique. You know what I mean? So I was like, we should do that. And then- yeah, make it a positive, fun thing. Have events in different cities, like, you know, drop in different cities where I know people really rock with me. So I was like, yeah, we gonna, we, we about to do this for real and, and um, take it to another level. So going into 2024, we gotta take some of these fun things that I do and, and make it even bigger, even bigger. Um, expand my relationships with the people who support me even bigger. You know, I'm bringing to bring in some mentorship into it as well as um, for the people who want to learn. You know, like now with me and Todd doing all these movies and stuff, and people want to know about television production, movie production, all that. Like people who are part of the clique will have more access to those things. So yeah, it's 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 it's, it's a lot. Me and Todd been talking and and planning. Yeah, we gotta come in. You ready? Are you ready to be a part of the clique? Hey, what's up? Other than that, family's been good. Um, Riley's in her last year of school for the undergrad. She's supposed to be graduating in May. Pray for my child that, it, it, that she come through to the end and that she graduates with flying colors. Um, Now she's rocking her afro. She's DJing now. Ain't that something? Riley's just... She just grew up on me, okay? Kayla, you know, she's doing her thing. Kayla now is, is wants to get into some type of sports management, but she does television production. Both our older girls are really coming up with some things and we're gonna see what 2024 takes them. Our little ones, Ace is now getting into... <laughs> well, first he's been into computers and, and all of that. He's been playing video games heavy, but now, He's into piano. He's starting to learn the piano. He's really liking it. So he said he really want to play for real. He's heavy on the jujitsu. He can wah wah. He's also decided that he really wants to start working out more. He told his dad. He, you know, he really want to get his muscles cut up, which he already got little muscles in his belly, I guess, to be a little person. <laughs> but now, you know, he wants to really get in shape. I don't know what that means because I already thought he was in shape for his age, but he said he want to work out. He, Ace got lots going on, honey. Ace is Ace. Oh, Ace got commercials coming out. I forgot about that. Ace, well, I might as well say Kaleidoscope and Ace. Ace is definitely, you know him in all that hair. He normally likes it braided. 
but he pulled the hair out for her in her campaign so y'all gonna see my baby with his hair down and don't be talking about my son look like a little girl because he does not like that okay uh, somebody said it in the comments but let me tell you something i am not the one that you know is um who cares about people's what their choices are and their gender and whatever whatever but everybody is supposed to be comfortable in their own gender correct right i'm telling you a said he does not like when people say he looks like a little girl because his hair is straight or his hair's down i'm telling you what he said so don't you say it <laughs> I'll tell you what, how he, what he feels about himself, what he said he don't like. Because you know how people always want to twist things. Oh, she's trying to afford. No, I ain't. I, this is what he said. Blaze is being her fabulous self and you will get more fabulosity in the coming year, I'm sure. Blaze turned four and her party was lit. <laughs> Do you hear me? We had us a great time. <laughs> See, the thing about the parties that I like to do, I like for everybody, I like fun for all ages. So if even if it's a kid's party, and we gonna have the DJ, it's gonna be turned. Like, it's not gonna be boring. Slide to the right, slide to the left. All my parties are lit, know that, okay? <laughs> Our karaoke at the restaurant is everything we do. My anaconda don't. We put our energy and put a lot of love and fun into it. My anaconda don't want nothing that you got but I want to continue that going. I went viral multiple times. Sometimes not always for the greatest things. <laughs> Sometimes do be for the great things. But what I will say is every time I'm okay. You know what I mean? Because I understand what comes with being an influencer or a um, celebrity, whatever you want to call it. I just appreciate everybody that has uplifted me, you know, and been a part of what I'm doing. I'm going to be doing so many more. Like I said, Candy Coated Click, we got it's going to be positive, whatever it is. 2024, I got so much to look forward to because guess what? I got to my 10 year anniversary, Riley's graduation, and those two things. If don't nothing else happen and God just allow me to keep living and seeing my children live and my husband live and all that good stuff. And my mom and, and all my aunts and my uncle. I got one uncle left. Thank you, Lord, for him too. And my daddy, of course. As long as God allows us to keep living and, and them two things happen with the anniversary and the graduation, my year is going to be made, honey. 2024, I got great things happening. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that's the only thing that's happening because I do have way more happening. You pled guilty to charges of speeding and damage to city property. I'm recommending community service with the Long Beach Recreations Department. So I'm in a movie that's dropping in December. I'm in a movie that's dropping in January. So I'm start, I'm ending and starting my year in a way of which that's going towards my dream. And that's how we all want to be, right? So guys, if you were a part of my vision board party or not, I'm not sure if you were or not. I hope you have a vision. I hope you've started putting together a vision for what you want to see for yourself for 2024. And here's the thing, do not be your own hater. I already said that earlier in this video, but I will repeat what that means. If you have a dream or something that you want to do, do not say to yourself, oh, well, that's gonna be hard. Oh, it's probably gonna cost a lot. People ain't gonna support it. Don't you do not nam negative question or nam negative comment before you take at least one or two steps forward or you know just do researching your idea or think about your idea or start planning your idea in some way don't tell yourself oh but it's gonna take forever none of that i don't want to hear none of that because if you do those things you have defeated yourself before you even tried and you have hated on yourself before you even allowed any other hater to hate on you okay so don't be your own hater 20 24 you're gonna be hate free you are gonna learn to be your own cheerleader whether you like it or not especially if you are a part of the team that i'm trying to build okay and be a part of this family this network so 2024 is gonna be amazing love you mommy we need to talk
Should all acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Well, speak on it. What's up, what's up, what's up, y'all? I am your girl, Candy, and I'm about to speak on it. <laughs> and sing. <laughs> Should all acquaintance be forgot and days of old things Sangoma is a herbalist. Are you like a, a medicine a healer person? Yeah, there is a medicine. You can smell it. Smell your ancestors. What we wonder may This year was productive, full of love and learning. I got so many things planned for 2024. I can't wait to build more memories with my family. And I'm just excited for what the year is to come. I feel like I learned a lot in 2023. I felt like I made some positive changes. I don't want to like go into this year like I know everything. I want to learn great things, positive ways, not negative lessons. But I want to learn some positive things for my growth going into 2024. Happy New Year. <laughs> 